Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Adam Boiter, founder of Boiter Bag Co. Uh, a little bit of background about me. Um, I started out my career at PlayStation, uh, launching PlayStation 3 PSP as a massive gamer, so that was great at that point. Then I swapped one voice, uh, one vice for the next, which was joining Perna Ricard and working on Absolute Vodka and Jameson Whiskey, where I actually got the pleasure to go to the Crucible and make a, um, a, a cherry bakewell rum using their 10,000 power centrifuge as a Christmas present to myself, which is amazing. Um, so my parents loved that cocktail when we had it at Christmas. Um, and then I think, I think as most marketeers, um, we do have a bit of a crisis of conscience and want to become uh, marketing maybe with a bit more purpose and kind of work uh, with that purpose. And so um, I started a side hustle with a purpose, which is an eco-conscious bag brand uh, Name with my name on it, which we'll come on to that later. Um, but that also led me to my current job, which is my day job, which is the uh, director of marketing for the National Citizen Service, which helps 16 to 17 year olds kind of realize their potential and what they can do. So, uh, a little bit about what we do. So, our mission is to craft deluxe, uh, modern, eco conscious bags. Uh, manufactured to the highest ethical standards without sacrificing style, function, or durability. Quite often, when you're looking at eco-conscious products or sustainable products, either they look shit or they break. Uh, and that was the one thing we wanted to make sure that when I'm a massive bag fan, I love Ali Capolino, all those kind of brands, um, but I couldn't find one which had matched that style, but also did some good uh, in the world. So story of a side hustle. Um, it started about two years ago, February 2017, and it always starts with a book with me. Uh, the last book I read, which was Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week, um, led me to, I'm a massive surfer, led me to create a product called Tan Safe, which is a fake suntan cream bottle that you can hide your valuables in on the beach whilst you go surfing on your own. And that's why uh, I think books are great to just really inspire and kind of create that change and, and make you get off, off your ass of the sofa and actually do something different compared to your day job. But this was the book I read, which is the idea that can change in your life and, and in, in, inside you and how to find it and build it. I read it on a plane which really inspired me to then talk to someone at work who said, hey, my husband named Pi is a designer for Fred Perry. You should go and speak to him. So I spoke to Pi and he was like, um, yeah, it sounds like a great idea. Eco-conscious, tick. Uh, brand with a purpose, tick. Where are you going to get it made? I was like, I have no idea. He's like, well, I think you should, uh, given the fact your wife is from Hong Kong, you should check out some of the markets in Hong Kong while you're there for Chinese New Year. So it was the year of the fire cockerel. Went over to Chinese New Year with a very heavily pregnant wife. Uh, and it's amazing uh, how uh, focused you get when you're about to have your first child. And it makes you realize that actually maybe you should get off and do the idea that you really, really wanted to do. So <laughs> we took a three day trip to Macau, which is uh, the kind of biggest gambling island off, off the state of Hong Kong. And uh, it was in the bath, uh, which I think where either in the shower or the bath is where you do your best, best thinking. Uh, and I drew this sketch. So this is the Holiday Inn paper in Macau of this bag that I want to design, which was a backpack briefcase with eco-friendly credentials. And uh, at the time I said, oh, you know, Dad, I've been, I want to do some research into what our name actually means. Uh, it's not just because I'm an e egomaniac that I wanted to name my bag brand Boiter, but it actually comes from Italy in the Piemonte region, and it actually literally translates to box on back. Uh, so if your name was ever to mean something and you were to create a product, this was it. Uh, they used to import the boite, which was the French word for box, from France. And then they would spray copper sulfate, which is definitely not eco-friendly in those days, uh, to uh, make sure that the vines didn't die and that they would produce wine. So this is me recreating that picture in the same Piedmonte Valley when we did a bit of a family road trip last year. So I was in Hong Kong, came up with this idea, had a sketch, and then I mentioned it randomly to a friend on, f on Facebook Messenger that, that day. And uh, it was like, yeah, I'm starting a men's bag company for reals. He's like, what? He's like, yeah, I've been researching properly, met a bag designer from Fred Perry who's going to help me out. Hey, I know a guy who manufactures all the bags for designers and high street brands in HK. Brilliant. He's British and American. He'll love you. Do you want an intro? Of course I do. So within 24 hours, I bought boiter.com URL off GoDaddy, but um, had to go through a, a, a Russian uh, site who actually had it, uh, paid 500 quid for it, got it turned around in 24 hours, set up a, a, an email, uh, set up using G Suite, and then literally pulled together a pitch in about 24 hours uh, before I met a man named John. Uh, so this is John's office where I uh, met John did my pitch. These guys produce bags for me, like Hunter Welly, Alexander McQueen, Kurt Geiger, and I just thought I'm really chancing my luck. So the last presentation, I just kind of believed in it and just did it anyway. 
Uh, and as Chance would have you saying, look, we, we work with all these big brands, but none of them are really thinking about any kind of eco-conscious or sustainable materials. And we would love to be able to incorporate that because we know the questions are going to start coming over the next few years. So he said, I'll tell you what, I believe in you as a person. I think the product's great. We'll work for you for free for a year in exchange for the knowledge because you clearly already have the knowledge of the kind of materials you want to use, the way you want it manufactured. Uh, and that was basically a knowledge exchange. So they mined me for my kind of, I guess, eco-conscious, sustainable, or purpose knowledge in return for free work, which is kind of unheard of. And these guys are an agency because if you go out into China and you're trying to source the right factory, the right materials, it's just an absolute nightmare. Uh, and so this was, I guess, my saving grace. Um, so they took me on. So by June 2017, uh, having done that sketch, translate it roughly into a PowerPoint, and then they translate it into CADs. We had our first sample which at the time I thought was the most awesome bag in the world. I was like, yes, I've got the physical product in my hand. It's so amazing. Looking back, it still looks fairly dodgy. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then you just you feed back and you keep iterating, you keep iterating, and it got better. It started to look a little bit more like a bag that I thought maybe I could put my name to and maybe someone might want to buy. A couple of more months, I get my Chinese visa. We're going to Hong Kong for our uh, family, family Christmas. And uh, I go and visit the factory. And I start seeing actually all the different iterations that the guys have done, all the feedback. And this is when it really starts clicking. I get really, really excited. Uh, on the way here, and I'd spoken to a guy who lived in Shenzhen, who was a bit of a videographer. So I got him to videographer the whole, um, the whole factory, the whole working conditions. Uh, and it took us about probably three attempts to get the right factory. We went through about f three factories to find the right one because you say, are you accredited? Are you S8000? Do you uh, pay your you know, workers fair wage? Do they not work overtime, et cetera, et cetera? And actually, if you scratch beneath the surface, they can't produce the documentation. So eventually, we found a great factory, um, and uh, they have been with us ever since. So February 2018, uh, Someone contacts me saying, hey, you're starting a side hustle, aren't you? I've got a friend who's a journalist who's doing an article about side hustles. So here we are in the Daily Telegraph, and we haven't even launched yet. We haven't even been on Kickstarter. And then March 2018 is when we get our final sample. So this is eventually what we ended up with. And it really is a law of incremental gains and just really kind of having that kind of continuous growth mindset to get to the product that you want. So... We use vegan-friendly leather, which has half the environmental impact of real leather, um, which obviously causes deforestation, even if it's you know, organically dyed, even if it's you know, reared on a really great farm, it still is really bad for the environment. We use recycled plastic bottles in every single bag. Uh, our tagline is on every single bag, which is the bag with less baggage, not the bag with no baggage. There's no product out there that doesn't really have a carbon footprint, uh, although you know we're getting closer to it with kind of closed loop recycling. So yeah, we use 15 recycled plastic bottles post-consumer on every single part of the lining, the threads, the zips. Um, we're also the second bag in the world to use bloom foam, which is made from algal bloom on lakes. So algae gathers under the sunlight. They scrape all the algae off. Uh, they then turn that and mix that with an EVA foam, and then they return the filtered water back to the environment and to make sure that those algal blooms and those lakes are clean uh, of algae, uh, which obviously causes carbon dioxide and further exacerbates global warming. And then the last key to the puzzle is obviously ethical manufacturing. As I said before, it took us three attempts to find the right factory. Even if they can make really, really great bags, if they're not making it ethically and you don't know the people that are making bags, we know the people on the production line by name. They featured in all of our Instagram pages. You can look them up. We know them by name. And they're very pr proud and pleased to work on, on Boy Tobacco. So in, in summation, it's made from 15 recycled plastic bottles. We filter 234 bottles of clean water back into the environment and 22 balloons of CO2 are kept from entering the atmosphere on every single bag that we make and the promises on every single bag that we make. So, as you can imagine, having a day job, being a marketing director, um, takes a lot of time, lots of evenings, lots of weekends, but I wanted to share with you the tools that have kind of made this journey possible, and I think there's never really been a better time to have a side hustle, given the fact of you know, technology and all the tools that are at our disposal. And actually, as I go on to talk about it later, it just makes actually your day job it enhances your day job because you have that knowledge of all of those different tools. So the obvious one is G Suite. 
Uh, the Microsoft guys are pleased I do use a Microsoft Surface Pro because it's the only um, laptop that really allows you to play full um, software whilst also being able to use the pen and actually design and feedback on, on the bags that we make. Great place, it's called Stack Skills. This is where I learned how to crowdfund, how Kickstarter works, how to trick the algorithm, how to make sure your campaign gets to the top. It also taught me how to use the scraping tool on the Kickstarter website itself so that you can literally draw down every single bag that's ever been promoted on Kickstarter into a spreadsheet. So you can create a histogram of every single pricing band, every single reward, and where you should actually place your brand. GoDaddy is an obvious one for URLs, but I think they're really, really great. Their customer service is awesome. If you have a problem, literally the live chat just pops up. They sort your problem out within 10 minutes and you can get on doing what you need to do. AppSumo, another really, really great platform that I use, allowed me to get a lifetime membership to Stencil, which you know I can use Photoshop, but if I want to be able to resize creative for a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad or a Snapchat um, vertical video, this is just a super simple tool that just allows you to do that in, in seconds and get it out in the right format, automatically done to the right DPI, etc. Rocket Lawyer, amazing, kind of for any legal contracts you need to do with factories and business partners, lots of templates that are just out there that you can literally nick and then uh, and then repurpose for your own purposes. Zero, great accounting. GIFs, when you want animated GIFs in a Kickstarter page, absolutely brilliant, just put in a video, get the GIF out, makes your page look great. Hunter, this is awesome in terms of finding out the correct email addresses, especially if you have the need to find PR journalists or just make sure that you need to find um, any other a verification for emails you might have in terms of your list. Uh, New World Stamp, brilliant for email um, signatures, which you, you don't really think about. I think, oh, it's an email signature, but actually it's like one of the key kind of like points of your brand when you're just first starting out and something that looks professional is just like really awesome. Yet another mail merge. Most people use MailChimp, but we used yet another mail merge. This is really great because you can actually send it from your Gmail account. So actually, instead of having to warm up servers that are going to reject your emails going through, it actually allows you to use hello at boyster.com or adamboyster.com to mass send emails, but they're personalized and they you know, feel and sound as though they are coming from you as a person, therefore more likely to get through. All GDPR compliant, by the way. LinkedIn, rather than just um, messaging everyone individually, you can export your LinkedIn connection and say, hey, I'm starting a side hustle. Would you be interested in supporting us? Same with your Facebook contacts. If you have a Yahoo account, you export all of your Facebook friends into just one uh, area and then not spam your friends, but make sure that the message is there and the content is applicable and they want to hear about it. Plan, which we use for all of our social media planning, literally just super visual, allows you to then just post out onto Facebook and Instagram. All of these things just save so much time uh, and, and energy um, you know, versus spreadsheets and all the other means that we had previously. And of course, uh, Kickoff Labs we used, which is a, um, it really gamifies. It's a, it basically allows you to set up a landing page pre your uh, crowdfunding campaign uh, and allows you to collect email addresses, but also then gamify those email addresses by incentivizing people to, the, the basically the more they share, the more rewards they get, the better tiers they get, and therefore it just creates this virality to your campaign even before you've launched. And then, you know, as a marketeer, yes, I could probably run Facebook advertising, but you still need to bring experts on boards, and so Tim Hyde, uh, it's a fabulous guy. If you ever need him to run uh, any kind of growth hacking or Facebook ads, he uh, launched Lifepack, which um, I think raised over a million million dollars in the U.S. And so he came on board and really helped us, like, just refine our strategy in terms of our kind of, I guess, engagement funnel, driving through to our um, our Kickstarter page. You've seen some great guys at the Forge, I think. You know, when you're a brand, you have limited budget at your disposal. Um, you need really, really great product photography. You need a really great video. And then hopefully the rest kind of takes care of itself. If you have a little bit of media money. But those are the two crucial things that we really invest in was product photography and finally the film, which I'm going to show you a quick trailer now, not the full three minute, but just to give you a flavor of where we're coming from. And um, any, uh, any great Kickstarter campaign is really made up of three main areas, PR, 
email and social. So, you know, pre-building that email list, making sure that you're getting your pre-awareness on social, and then obviously reaching out to PR contacts, which is why that Hunter tool is so great, just for verifying that those contacts are correct, and then making sure you can follow up on those on those PR contacts to make sure they all come together on day one. And the, the Stack Skills course allowed us to know how to trick the algorithm or actually make the algorithm work for in your favor effectively by making sure that you raise enough in the first 24 to 40 hours so that you can basically become a project that is loved by Kickstarter, that is picked out by the editorial team, that bumps you up the organic search rankings and then top that with some media on top. And uh, we basically hit our target in three or four days, um, which was amazing, which then got us into uh, the projects we love, so show me product design, projects on earth, sorted by magic, and we were in the top three bag brands uh, that week. But it just doesn't stop there, so we had a really successful funding campaign, but then how do you actually start to fulfill all of those uh, backers? So again, we used a great tool called BackerKit, just plug straight into the Backer Kickstarter, emails all of your contacts automatically, chases them if they haven't given your address, allows them to even upgrade a bag or buy another bag, even though the Kickstarter is closed, you're still generating money as you're producing the bags uh, in the factory. And then it, it was super simple. That then plugged into a, another company called Easy Ship, which has deals with every single um, uh, postage, like DHL, FedEx, at break, breakneck prices, which allows you to select the best um, uh, provider to send it to the best location, and it's all seamless. They have a warehouse in Hong Kong, which linked to our factory in China, and then they just all got sent out, and everyone's received their bag uh, as of last week. And then finally, I guess the last piece of the puzzle, which is no, no surprise, is just, just Shopify, again, which plugs into Zero, our finance system. So I just think it's just so amazing that we have all of these tools at our disposal. I've probably taken you through 20 tools, but you know, when you have a day job and time is an essence, if you can plug all those into in terms of a combination, uh, and create those systems and processes, uh, then, then, then that's what you get. So I'd just like to finally really land on, you know, managing a day job with a side hustle is difficult. You know, it does take evenings, it does take weekends, working till midnight, preparing this presentation whilst you're trying to feed your two-year-old son before he goes to bed, has a bath, and then you're working on this. But I'd, I would say it's enhanced my day job more than anything, and it was actually the, the main thing that led me to have a day job with a purpose, which was working for the National Citizen Service. So that's me. Thank you very much for listening. Go and have another cocktail.